Hi there, my name is James and I'm working with AV3 Software to bring you an Element 3D tutorial. AV3 offers great discounts on visual effects and motion graphics plugins from some of the best plugin creators in the industry. Visit av3software.com and have a look for yourself. Welcome to part one. Today we'll be preparing the scene and setting up the ship to move through the asteroid field. This is by no means supposed to be a comprehensive tutorial, but it should give you a good base to start from. First up, let's create a new composition. And then let's create a new solid and call it scene. And then let's apply the element effect to that scene. Next, you want to click on scene setup and you'll be presented with this view. On the right, you can see the available models and you can see the Star Wars pack that was used in a previous tutorial but we're just going to use a model that I found online. No fancy shaders, just a very basic setup. Next up, I'm going to create a new null object. I'm going to name that ship control. Check it as a 3D layer, and then duplicate the layer and name it ship control parent. Create a new camera. Doesn't really matter what you call it, but I'm just going to call it main. And you can see we can spin around quite happily. The goal here is to get the ship to move along with the ship control so we can more easily move around in a 3D space. However, we can't just parent scene to ship control, as you can see. What we need to do is get the ship to use the same positional values as the null object. To do this, we're going to go into group 1, which is the group that our ship is in, go to particle replicator, we're going to make sure we can see the position of the ship control parent. Alt-click on the stopwatch for position X, Y. And we're going to use the pick whip to drag it onto the ship control parent's position. And we're going to do the same for ship position Z, specifically on the third value of the position. And now it should quite happily move around with the null object. Next up, we're going to do the same thing with rotation. We're going to drag X rotation onto the first value of orientation y value onto the second, and z value onto the third. And so now it should rotate as well. So next we're going to go into ship control parent, and we're going to unfortunately paste this very lengthy expression, and be sure to change the name of the layer it's referencing to just ship control. Maybe that this expression is overly complicated, but it does exactly what we want it to do, and I'll explain what it does in a minute. Let's use the camera controls to zoom out a little bit to see what's going on. And same as before, we're going to take the position value of the ship control parent and pick whip it over to ship control's position value. And as a quick demonstration, let's see how it looks. Let's use ship control to make a basic curved path. As you can see, the ship moves along the path. So let's right click on ship control, go to transform, and check auto orient along path. And this changes things up a little bit. As you can see, the rotation now follows the path. The expression that we posted before gets a rotational data of our ship control layer. This is important because Element 3D needs that rotational data so our ship rotates properly. However, as you can see, it's not quite turned out how we wanted it to. So let's fix this quickly. Go to the Y rotation of the ship in the element layer. And at the end of the expression, just type in negative 180. And this will flip it around 180 degrees. However, you may also find that the Z rotation is also flipped. To remedy this, just go to the Z rotation. And at the end of the expression, type in asterisk negative 1. This will reverse any rotation. So now it should all work perfectly. So let's reset everything. And then go back into scene setup. We're going to create a new folder and make sure it's set to group 2. And then we're going to use the search function and look up rock. And pick just a few rock models, making sure everything is in group 2.
and we'll just make sure all of this is in the proper position. Our rocks are in group 2, so let's open the group 2 tab. Let's change particle count to 100. We'll drop down to the particle look. Go to replicator effects. Let's change the z-scatter effect to 1000. The y-scatter to 300. And the x-scatter to 600. And as you can see, we've got an asteroid field of sorts. Now let's change the particle size. Change the size of randomness. Bring up the particle size a little bit more. A lot more. You can see it's starting to shape up a little bit. But we're in the center of it, and we want to fly into it. So let's take position Z of group 2. And then let's crank it up so that our ship is on the very edge of the asteroid field. If you're not a fan of the layout, just go to random seed and play around until you get something you like the look of. This looks fine, so let's start moving our ship through the scene. Let's go to ship control, create a position keyframe at the very start, then move the timeline to the very end. Then we'll move our ship at the very end of the asteroid field. Let's quickly parent the camera to ship control parent and then we can see where the ship is at all times. And there we have it, the ship is moving through the asteroid field, although it does bump into a few obstacles along the way. So whenever our ship collides with something, we're just going to keyframe the ship control position so that it smoothly dodges the obstacle. And we'll just speed this up so you don't have to sit through it. also affect the z-rotation or any other rotational values so the ship moves in a more natural way. So when you're happy with your ship's path, go to top view. One of the advantages of not changing the starting position of the ship is that when we go to top view we can always see the ship at the center of the composition. So next we're going to create a light, make sure it's a point light and let's call it engine. And we're going to move that to the center of the thruster at the back of the ship. And be sure to parent the light to ship control parent. And let's also switch to front view to make things a little bit easier for us. When we switch back to active view, we can see the light follows the ship. Now let's duplicate that light and let's call it particle. Go back to top view and let's move particle over to the front of the ship. And that'll do for now. Now let's create another new null object. And let's call it camera control. Make sure it's the 3D layer. And we're going to pick with the position of camera control onto ship control parent. Just the position and not the rotation. And then we're going to parent our camera with camera control rather than ship control parent. Going back into active camera, you can already see how this changes our perspective of the scene. To accentuate that, let's add a little barrel roll. Using the camera controls, let's move the camera alongside the ship.
Then set a keyframe and move the camera backwards, so the camera moves backwards while the ship moves forwards. And then let's play around with this to get some movement that we're happy with. So now let's get the camera to orbit around the ship. And to do this we'll use the rotation values of the camera control. And there we go. Next up, let's create a new solid and let's call it space. And let's just take this layer right down to the bottom. And we'll add the element effect to the space layer. Do a search for the environment model and then open the materials panel. Change every value that you can down to zero with the goal of making a pure black hollow sphere. Then let's create another composition, make it 8000 by 4000. And this will serve as the texture for our background. For the time being we'll just be using its basic star map, so make sure it's fitted to the composition. Now ordinarily you'd use this method if you wanted to have an animated texture, but I'll be doing this just so I can show you the changes to the texture in real time. Go to Scene Setup. Although actually first, you want to go to Custom Layers, Custom Texture Maps. Let's quickly name our space composition to space. Drag it in and hide the layer because we don't need to actually render it. And then set our first custom texture map to that space composition. Then we want to set the illumination texture of our space map to our custom layer. Then we want to scroll down and set our illumination intensity to 100%. This ensures that our background is fully lit regardless of lighting. That looks fine, so let's go back to our space background composition. And let's crank up the brightness so we can see a little bit easier, just for the time being. Let's go to World Transform, and let's turn the world scale up to about 50. As you can see, the camera actually moves outside the space environment. So to remedy this, we're going to pick whip the world transform position of our space layer onto the ship control parent position. Now the space environment is static relative to the camera. And that's it for now. In part 2, we'll be looking at ways to make the scene look a little bit better. Thanks for watching, and be sure to check out av3software.com for great deals on After Effects plugins and other motion graphics and VFX software.